Mr. Spooky, I trust that you're ready for a tale that will chill you to your very core, one that will make your sleepless nights long and haunting. This is a story that defies reason and sanity, as a man's life unravels in an asylum where reality itself blurs, and the line between what's real and what's not becomes terrifyingly thin. Let me tell you about Robert Crane. His life took a dark turn when he awoke in a dimly lit room, the air thick with the stench of antiseptic. He was locked away in the Thornwood Asylum for reasons he couldn't fathom. Robert had always been a rational man, but the past few days had been a relentless spiral into madness. He was haunted by visions, grotesque, surreal images that danced on the periphery of his vision. Faces contorted in agony, elongated limbs reaching for him from the shadows, and an incessant whispering that clawed at his sanity. The nurses and doctors assured him that these were merely the symptoms of his affliction, but Robert couldn't be so sure. His fellow patients were no comfort, each one seemingly trapped in their own peculiar nightmares. A man in the corner ceaselessly scratched at invisible insects crawling beneath his skin. A woman in the next room babbled incoherently about a never-ending labyrinth. Robert was trapped in a surreal hellscape where he couldn't be certain whether his visions were real or the fevered imaginings of a broken mind. The asylum's director, Dr. Elizabeth Crowley, was a sinister figure. She was always shrouded in a dark veil of mystery, her eyes harboring secrets too dreadful to utter. She insisted that the patients undergo experimental treatments designed to purge their hallucinations, but Robert sensed that there was something more sinister at play. One fateful night, Robert made a desperate escape from his room. He stumbled upon a hidden passage that led to a subterranean chamber beneath the asylum. There, he discovered a labyrinthine network of tunnels filled with ancient symbols and cryptic writings. As he delved deeper into this secret world, his sanity continued to unravel, and he couldn't trust what was real or illusion. In these twisting catacombs, he encountered other inmates who had vanished mysteriously. Their ghostly apparitions whispered to him, warning of the horrors that lurked within the asylum's darkest recesses. Reality and nightmare merged, and Robert's grip on his own identity began to slip. He uncovered a sinister truth that defied all reason. The asylum itself was a living, malevolent entity, feeding on the fears and torments of its inmates. Dr. Crowley's experiments were not to cure, but to amplify the madness, allowing the asylum to grow more powerful. She was its high priestess, offering her charges as sacrifices to the eldritch entity that dwelled within the asylum's walls. Now, Robert finds himself trapped in an endless loop of terror, never knowing if the next apparition, the next twist of the labyrinthine tunnels, is real or a product of his shattered mind. The darkness of the asylum has consumed him, and he has become just another lost soul in the asylum's unfathomable horror. As I write this email, Mr. Spooky, I cannot help but wonder whether Robert's tale is a product of a tormented mind or if it's a chilling reality that defies our understanding. Beware, for there are horrors that exist beyond the realm of reason, and they may lurk closer than we dare to imagine. Sleep well, if you can, your unearthly storyteller.